Hi, I'm Tabitha Williams, and welcome to What's Eating Harlem. We cover the most exciting community in the world. There's so much happening in Harlem. Let's get started. So what I do is it's just like a, like a, like a hook, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I use my hands like a hook, and I'm feeding it in, and I'm stirring my, turning my thing. My grandma taught me this. Mm -hmm. It's one of her little tricks. We take a look at the Black Chef series featuring Harlem chefs, Boots Johnson and Lance Nolan. They're cooking up some biscuits and gravy, y'all. All of that and more coming up next. This program is made possible by J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, the Harlem Community Development Corporation, and by the West Harlem Development Corporation, solutions through collaboration. Also by the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce and Harlem Park to Park. I ain't the only one, just another one, just another one on the list. I'm not the only one on your list. All right, chef. What are yeah. you gonna What are you gonna make for us today? Let's do um, some biscuits with some red eye gravy. Oh, nice! Sounds yeah, delicious. Sounds yes, ready? sounds let me, great. Let me get ready. All right. Because I was, you know, one thing I always do is I yell at my cooks too. I'm like, you're not ready to cook unless you get an apron on. That's right. Well, you it puts you it puts you in your right mindset. You well, know what I mean? Well, when you say we were gonna cook something, you know, I, yeah, I, yeah, I always yeah. got I always got an apron in my back pocket, so <laughs> you know, I just pull it out, so I'm ready right, to let's go. Make, let's make some biscuits first. All right, cool. All right. And we're gonna, we're gonna go we're gonna go down home, grandma style. Grandma style. All right. So not not that thirty five year old grandma. Not thirty five year old. No. Okay. Old. We're gonna go old, the old grandma. So I was actually in I was in Connecticut and mm -hmm. I was at a a, a, a shop uh, one of those uh, uh, vintage shop one of those vintage, we were, we were antiquing mm -hmm. and I and I walked across these bowls and I went oh that's gets yeah. <laughs> so, that, so these, this, that looks this, like this grandma's. Biscuit. That looks like grandma's oh, God, biscuit it, bowl. It, it does. It, it really there, does. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna start off with that, and we're using some white with the flour, mm -hmm. self rising flour. Yes. So you know, you know self rising flour. You're, you're a chef, but for everybody out there, self rising flour already has the salt and the baking powder already into it. So all the all the active agents in, to make it rise up are inside of self rising flour. If you use an all purpose flour, you have to add your right. baking powder and your salt to it. That's that was, right. That I got it. That's good. That's, that's good. That's good. That's done. Yeah, we're that's good. right. All right. So we got this white lily flour. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we're going to uh, go ahead and weigh out. We're going to go 14, 1450 grams. Mm -hmm. All right. Just go ahead and do this. Now, this recipe does about 24 biscuits. So we're going to go ahead and make a bunch. We might need a bigger bowl. Uh -oh. We need some bigger bellies too. Well, there's a bunch of y'all hanging around here. Yeah, it's a lot of us. So, all right, so that's a thousand there. Mm hmm. Put that in there. And we're going to go ahead and grab another five. There we go. Oh, we're almost, almost, almost. Everything's in it, right? So, mm -hmm. we have to add all this. We don't have to, to right. It. Boom. So, we're good. Okay, nice. Right. Have all our flour in there. We're going to make a little well. Mm -hmm. As much as we can in this, this tight bowl, right? Mm -hmm. And we usually use buttermilk, but today mm -hmm. I'm going to try something different today. Mm -hmm. So you're going to do a little something different. You're going to yeah. Let's just try something a little different right now. We're going to try something with a little almond milk. Oh, nice, time, right? nice. Okay. So I got a quarter almond milk here. Mm -hmm. Let's put it on here. Let's tear it. Go back to zero. Now, like I told you, I always flavor my buttermilk, right? Mm -hmm. so we'll do the same thing with almond milk as well. So we're gonna add some honey. To okay. It. All right. So I have I have some Lamar Farms here. Mm -hmm. These 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 actually these 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 honeys are actually from here in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I'm going to use this other little one. This, this is a nice little clover honey. Nice. That we're going to use, and we're going to go. I like a man that's got three or four different honeys in his kitchen. <laughs> yeah, and because I, I do. Well, and agave. <laughs> yeah. And I got sorghum. Yeah. And I got malach. Yeah. Wait, 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 you got, you got, you got it all. You got all it all. So let's go here and go 1950 with some honey. Oh yeah. Get it nice and sweet. Mm-hmm. Well, that didn't go there. That was too much in that one. Let's go ahead and mix it in. Well, my spoons are here. Actually, I like to do a fork. Yeah, to get that. Kind of whisk it in. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm gonna go just bigger one over here. I love the way that I love the way that looks. Can we see, get a nice see, see shot the of the way that? Yeah. So that just shows that the honey, the honey is blended into there. I love that. All right. So I want I want to taste that. Let me get a little spoon. Right here. I, I, I used to have tasting spoons, mm -hmm. but my wife was like, you're using up too much plastic. So she bought me some bamboo ones. I'm gonna one taste time, that. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna use that hand. Damn, that's gonna be good. It's gonna be nice. Huh? That's, gonna, that's, gonna, that's gonna, man. Yep. All you need is some butter now. Wait, wait, we'll do that too. Damn. So we're gonna just start folding this in. This is, this man, I made, maybe I made too many for this bowl. I need to make a bigger bowl. That's all right. I'm gonna go a bigger bowl. You got a bigger bowl? Of course I got a bigger bowl. Ooh, you got a... Yes. Well, chef, I got a bigger bowl. <laughs> of course I got a bigger bowl. You do think so. Butter. Yep. We gotta do some butter in there. Our last batch didn't have any butter in it, brother. Can't have this without butter. And now this is frozen, too. And the reason why I'm gonna freeze it, I'm gonna do like a half a pound. Right. Of it. And we're gonna grate it into the flour. My man. All right? So, cheese grater. Let's get at it. Ooh. Oh, we're grating butter, nice. <laughs> I think I did this 15 times a day this mm -hmm. morning. My the other morning I woke up and my, my, my elbows was like Hey, we're getting, we're, getting, we're, getting, we're, getting a, we're getting a good lesson, man. We're getting a good class. This is this is this is and good half, stuff. This is our butter. That's right. So that was. And so instead of letting the butter come to room temperature, uh, or slicing cold pieces and then cooling down the dough, you grate it frozen. Yep. And then it incorporates into the what dough. What it does is creates those layers and mm -hmm. stuff in there too. And then that butter melts and cooks mm -hmm. a nice little flakiness. Mm -hmm. That's why. Now is this is this a technique your grandmother used as well? Yeah. Yeah, frozen butter. There's always butter in the freezer. We're getting, we, we're getting live biscuits from the man himself. So what I do is it's just like a, like a, like a hook, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. My hands are hook, and I'm feeding it in, and I'm stirring my, turning my thing. My grandma taught me this. Mm -hmm. One of her little tricks. And it's kind of like, and, and all the little techniques and stuff. Everyone makes a well. Mm -hmm. They start putting the putting the flour and stuff into right, the egg white. Right. They make a right. pasta. The same thing, man. Same thing. Yeah, I feel it coming together. Now, white lily flour is really, really light. Mm -hmm. So your your dough is really soft. Mm -hmm. It's 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 something about that stuff. I get I, I buy it and I, I finish people it. swear by white lily Dude, I ship for it in. biscuits. I, sh I ship it in from the yeah. south, bro. I'm telling you, I really do. My vendor brought it in specially for me. He goes, Chef, are you gonna you gonna make sure you buy all this stuff up? He bought it in just for you. But don't worry, I go through about 400 pounds of flour a week. Woo! Yeah. That's a lot of biscuits. It's a lot, bro. That's a lot of biscuits. It's a lot. That's a lot of biscuits. We're doing it, man. It's really, really good. I see how it's coming together. Mm-hmm. Looking good. Yeah. And what I'm doing, I'm just, I'm just coming around until it starts to pull away a little bit, right? Pulling away. It's a little wet. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour to it, so I'm a little wet. But I'm gonna do that a lot of on my, on my, on my work here. Right. But you can smell the honey in that yeah. too, can't you? I can still taste it, man. It's just delicious. It's good stuff here. I'm just pulling, pour that out. I'm gonna need some more flour into here. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's not, so it comes to a nice little, little dough. See that? Now, how do you know? How do you know when your dough is is just right to roll? It has a nice. It, it, it's not sticking to my hands. Mm -hmm. It's that. It's it's. 
I'm, it's not wet mm -hmm. anymore. It's nice, it's nice and dry. Mm -hmm. See, now, see, I'm like I'm wet here. I need right. more flour. A little more flour. I had too much liquid, and it's just all a feel. Now I'm the, just, you 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 know. Folding it in. Harlem, mixing it. Harlem Biscuit Company has gotten so busy. Do you still have time to get up in the morning and make your wife biscuits before you go to work or no? You know what's funny thing is? You still doing that? I, I, I do, but I start I started making hers um, with masa. With masa? Gluten free. Ah. So I made, I made, I said, I didn't really like the gluten free flowers. Right. I started using corn masa. Mm -hmm. I use corn masa and flour in my mm -hmm. in my um, fried chicken blend mm -hmm. because I didn't I didn't want to do the right. small flour. So right. I do a little bit, so it, it's all corn, so it's gluten free. Okay. Gives a little crispiness too. I'm, I'm, really I'm thinking. Yes. But the one thing that I made her I made her biscuits with the corn flour with the masa, mm -hmm. and um, it, just, it just came out just just right. Mm -hmm. And they were gluten free. Mm -hmm. All the other gluten free flours had like chickpea flour and right, this. right, right. You had to put xanthan gum in it mm -hmm. and stuff. And the the masa one just comes out just nice. Well, I'm 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 thrilled to hear you. You're still making biscuits for the misses. <laughs> biscuits for the misses. All right, so fill that. Fill that. So yeah, fill I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that butter is keeping the dough and nice and cool, see, right? You see, mm -hmm. you see the butter. It's beautiful. You see, look at that. That's gonna be all layers and stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. So some more flour on the bottom. Put on my more. Can you see the butter? Because that's frozen. Mm-hmm. If you went on and you had it at room temperature, just cold butter, it would blend into the flour. Right. It's still nice and soft, but we can see that butter in there. So, so it's gonna, gonna it's gonna melt and become layers. Yeah, right here somewhere. I got so many drawers and I got too many. <laughs> I got so, so, too so, many drawers and too it's many a, cabinets. <laughs> it's, it's a lab, man. A, a chef's kitchen is a is a is a chef's lab. You got things everywhere. I have stuffs in, in every pocket in my kitchen. That. Yeah, that looks that looks beautiful. Nice, yeah. Out of my kitchen. Alright, so we're just gonna make some make some biscuits here. We're gonna get a mm -hmm. let's do this big one here. Put a little flour on it so it can stick. And then boom. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's a key. Here's a key part here too. Mm -hmm. You can't overwork right, this part, right? Because then your it gets it gets tighter, right? And you can fill it. You can really fill it. So I'm just gonna have to do it nice and light. Make this a few, three more biscuits here to fill this pan up. Pop them in, and then we're gonna make some some gravy. Boom. That yeah. looks that looks fabulous. Good. That looks fabulous. All right. I'm sorry. We're cooking. You don't have movie magic where you're gonna pop them in and pull the refreshments out. We cooking. All right. I smell the biscuits baking, yeah, my brother. Good. They are delicious. So we need something to go on them. That's right. All right. What we got? So 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 in in at my, my shop we have. We have with a biscuit, mm -hmm. in a biscuit, on a biscuit. I love it. So now we're going to talk about <laughs> what's going to biscuit. All right. All right. So we're going to make a nice little twist on a red eye gravy and like a Creole sauce mm. and a little shrimp. Mm -hmm. we're, just gonna, mm. we're just going to throw it all in there. We're going to do shrimp and biscuits? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. There's no rules, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There's no rules. All right. So let's go ahead and start making our... Our red eye gravy. Okay. Now you know the history of red eye gravy, right? So, uh, but tell me. All right. So <clears throat> they would be on the on the, on the trail. They'd be sitting there and they have their their uh, their, their their coffee and mm -hmm. in the morning and they have got their ham steaks and stuff mm -hmm. on there and all that fat from the ham steak was rendering off mm -hmm. into that skillet. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I take the meat off and they would like deglaze and they would get all that seasoning stuff all there, mm -hmm. so they hit it with their coffee. Okay, because they already had the coffee. They already had the coffee in their hand. Right. So Cookie, right. on the trail, went yeah. 
<laughs> he glazed it. Didn't know he was right. going. Right. <laughs> Great. I need some liquid. I'm going to put some coffee they in start it. Putting, they, they start right. putting, like, you know, tomatoes and stuff in there mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And then pour that on top of, right. the, of their ham. Yeah. Made the ham more moist. Red eye gravy. Boom. All right. So there it is. That means it's super simple. Right. And what we're going to do. But sounds is, good, right? Oh, it sounds, it sounds amazing. Bacon, like mm -hmm. ham fat. Right. And like a coffee. And coffee. Tomato. Yeah. Just add that that little bitterness in the back of the tongue. And we'll have the same thing too, like with like shrimp and grits. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why we're throwing some some, some mm -hmm. shrimp in here, because they they were just like getting rations mm -hmm. of their grits, mm -hmm. fishing, picking up shrimp mm -hmm. off while they're going out while they're going out fishing, and it's called breakfast shrimp. Mm -hmm. So you start, you know, yes, that's right, breakfast shrimp. Yep. And What's Eating Harlem wants to get you involved. Visit our website www.whatseatingharlem.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like our Facebook. Now, what do you smoke with? Uh, I like to, my personal, I like to use a blend of a hickory and apple. Ah, okay. That's my, that's my, that's my, that's my go-to blend, yeah. right. Yeah. I'm an oak person. Oak, oak straight oak. Mm -hmm. Mostly, oak and mostly just oak. Mm -hmm. but hickory. I'm kind of a purist. Yeah. Well, the thing is with oak is it doesn't it doesn't have like that really strong smoke. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 more palatable for ladies. Mm -hmm. So like because you can sometimes you can mm -hmm. over smoke with hickory or mesquite. Mm -hmm. You get that numb like you had a cigar. You get that numbness in your mouth. What you just said is important that a lot of people don't realize. Over smoke. Over smoke. So, you know, in Kansas City, we treat smoke like a seasoning. Everything is smoked, but you know, it's a seasoning. Smoke is not, you're not supposed to eat barbecue and, 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 and taste a forest fire. Right, right. You know, you're supposed to taste the seasoning. You're supposed to taste the meat. You're supposed to taste the smoke. Where that you know. fire goes on and it starts caramelizing that brown right. stuff. Right, right. And it's added, you get that nice little bark and stuff there, so you bite it and you get that, that oh, it's, a, it's, like, it's like a whiff. Mm -hmm. Where you get it, where it's like, it's like oh, it's right. smoky. But, but when your lips turn numb, mm -hmm. you over smoke. Out of my kitchen. Get out of my kitchen. That's the dog trying to eat. Sorry, I put the dog around. Out of my kitchen. But the, but the, that's that's what we're trying to do with with, with it has to be, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a balance mm -hmm. stuff there. If you get the right rub, get the nice caramelization. Mm -hmm. The thing is that with Memphis, you just eat it just like that. But in Kansas, you guys put sauce on it and then you eat it. So you got you guys. So when I say you got when you. From what I know, when you try to put sauce on it, you kind of cover your mistakes. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, this is this is this is the re-education. This is the re-education part of the program. The diff the reason why Kansas City barbecue is considered the best barbecue on the planet, and I'll, I'll you know I, I know it's hard to hear, but the reason is is because we pay just as much attention to the sauce as we do. To the meat. That's the meat the, is that's the, the first time I've ever heard somebody say that. I'm gonna give that one to you. That's the key. That was good. That's the key. That the, was good. Yeah, that's right. You know, and if you realize a lot of other places, is that mine? Cheers to that. All right, cheers that was, to that. That's a good one. Well, well now you know. Say, I will give you some props on that one. Well, thank you very much, that's, sir. I appreciate really it. All right. See? That's it. Okay, let's get on barbecue. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other. That's a, you want to go? You want to We both barbecue. So today we're making biscuits, but. But we, we can barbecue. barbecue. We All right. Yeah, don't burn those biscuits. Oh my God. Oh. That, guys? Look at that. And you know what the funny thing is? They smell delicious, man. Do we have Do we have some butter ready to go on those biscuits? Oh, look at that. You, you know, really? You can smell that um, that almond milk as soon as it popped out. Well, you lifted the top off, and I saw that fluffiness inside. Oh my goodness, bro. Mm -hmm. they're, they're almost done. It's delicious. Let's get that right here. See those? Are, oh my goodness! Look at that. Oh, those are just like two more minutes. All right, red eye gravy. Sauce. So we got that going on. Now, I'm from California, and my grandmother always had Parmesan sausage. <laughs> I haven't had a Parmesan sausage mm -hmm. in years. Mm -hmm. I was at the Dollar Tree <laughs> getting Easter candy. Right. <laughs> and I saw these in the freezer, and I bought like twenty. I gotta get some. <laughs> cause I, cause I, I don't know if it was like southern thing or. You say you said I was at the Dollar Tree. 
And I had to buy it. Easter candy. <laughs> Smell it. You see that? And look how fat and how fast that was. 450 degrees, bro. And that almond milk has that little bit of sweetness in yeah. there. That's and then we add the honey to yes. it as well to really just like bring it all around, bring it home. I'm ready for some butter, brother. Oh man. Man, those are those are beautiful. Those are beautiful. Nice. Let me just go ahead and yeah. put those to the side. Let's go ahead. We got our oil going right here. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna brown off our sausage. In there. Yes, and they're loose. Right. That's how you do it. That's all right. I love Farmer John sausage. I, I I mean this is this is this is authentic and rustic the way you make it. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna brown the sausage. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little olive oil inside of here, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna let, also let all that fat of the sauces render off mm -hmm. in there as well. Um, everything's good with bacon fat and sausage fat and pork and uh. I know I, I know I speak for the crew. You know? We are we are so hungry right now. Why not? Why not put some little bacon fat in there? Why Ooh. not? It's, it's here. It's here. Come on, why not? My you mama would be there's proud. Rules. There's rules. That's right. It smells wonderful. But we haven't seasoned it yet. Yeah, and it just, but it, it's all the naturalness of it's, it. Yeah. It's, the na it's the bacon fat, the, the sausage, right. the corn, the right. peppers, the onions. Right. It's all the natural exactly. stuff. Exactly. Now we can season it. Yep. So I have, a, I have a little blend. We talked earlier about, I've been doing the same blend mm -hmm. since 92. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just my essence. So we're going to put a little of that in there. And I put that in now so the heat activates. Mm -hmm. You know people always yep. put space plates and rub them. Right. I, I, put, I put those in there so it activates, the heat activates the spice. Yep. I like to now season. Now smell it. Uh, yeah, I like to season that way too. Oh man. You know, and that, that's like a, an important part in, um, in a lot of Middle Eastern cooking too. Yes. It's to saute your spices. Yep. So now we're doing a red-eyed gravy. Let's go and add some coffee. We gotta put some coffee. Yep, so here's a little French press here, mm -hmm. some coffee. Nice and strong. Crank the fire up a little bit more. Mmm, sounds good too. Sounds good, smells good. Let that simmer for a second. Yeah. And then I have a little shrimp stock here. I see. Just gonna pour a little of that in there. Just because we're keeping the shrimp in it, yeah. Let's bring that to a boil. Mmm. Just like all that, all that, all that fat, and we got the spices, we got the vegetables. It's just all these things that are smearing together. And the funny thing about it, we haven't even tasted it yet. I, I'm, I've been tasting. <laughs> I don't. I've been tasting it <laughs> since we started cooking it. So I just, I'm just getting everything. And we have some nice marinellis. Marinellis. Mm -hmm. Because I, I want to put some tomatoes and stuff in there, and then I, right. I want to show that you can do mm -hmm. something with with, with I mean, mm -hmm. My mother always had, you know, a jar of spaghetti sauce in mm -hmm. the cupboard. Nice. This was always doctor that up. That's a nice touch, and then you can give it a little consistency too. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it, can, it can bring it up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Just give it some creaminess. Mm -hmm. Give it nice and thick. Or we could, add, you know, put some little more roux or something in mm -hmm. there. Well, I think the, the tomato sauce is probably going to make a nice, nice yeah, backdrop. Really, yeah. really good. Oh my goodness! I think that we got something here. Let's just go ahead and taste it here. Let's see where we're at. Is it good? <laughs> you're not going to let me taste it, man. You're not. You're not going to let me taste it. Oh. Well. <laughs> There you go, Jeff. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead and do that. But you taste that coffee. The coffee's, mm. the coffee's really full. Yep. Yeah. Mmm. It's so good. That's fun, right? That spice is coming through too. This is what I call hooked up. This is delicious. Everything in here is delicious. And then you threw the kale in. We got a little color in there. We got some vegetable.
Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Chef Melvin Boots Johnson. Thank you. Absolutely wonderful. I mean it. That's all we have for now. Join us next time on What's Eating Harlem. See you uptown. This program was made possible by J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, the Harlem Community Development Corporation, and by the West Harlem Development Corporation, solutions through collaboration. Also by the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce and Harlem Park to Park. Oh man, this, this was absolutely wonderful. I think, I think the crew... The crew would like to get in there. I'm feeling so free. Hey, Paul, guys, come on in. Come get some of this, man. man. We got a plate for you. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Chef Melvin here, man. I can't stop eating. I would have called you sooner. Cause it's part of my genes. Go ahead. I had to count our position. One, two, there's no more competition. Boom, scooby dee pop boy. Come slow. I'm waking up, I'm waking up, I rise from where I start, hey, I get around, I get around, stay true all of the time, oh, here's your chance, come and take it, don't be scared, there's no limitation, it's a revelation.